Hey. Oh no, there it is. There it is, Mike. I know what I see. I do that all the time. I put my finger over the little speaker. So I switched it up. My bad, y'all. Hey, Mandy. Did that fix it, Mike? I'm sorry about that, Michael. Um, I'm in here hanging out doing the doing that little thing I do, um, which is you know covering for. Kamish, while he's on his hiatus, sound is low. Um, is it better? Because what the hell? The sound is an issue again. Y'all gonna start calling me captain if I don't fix this, aren't you? Oh, now you can hear me. Good, cool, okay. Because you know. Even though there are times where, you know, I forget how to do things. I don't know, chemically or otherwise, um, I can, you know, I can cop to me being computer illiterate for all of those that want to bash me. You know, I can take it. I'm not going to get emotionally, you know, tore up. Um, but, you know. Hey, George, what's going on? Dennis, what's happening? Hello, Mon man. I see, I almost called you Mondi. Mandy. You know, ebonically speaking, you could be Mondi. Um, I'm popping in, you know, just talk a little bit, you know, keep y'all entertained. Oh, Dennis, you in London. Um, sorry about your boys today. Um, you know. I've even gotten to the point where I'll, I'll watch a little soccer because I'm fiending for football. Um, they could have had the game if they'd have played the whole game. They kind of um, played flat-footed and basically, you know, in football terms, they got out-hustled today is pretty much what happened to them. Hey, Randy, what's going on? Glad you could join me. Um, but uh, on the Raider tip, you know, there's not really a lot to report. I mean, no real movement on Khalil Mack. We might, uh, we still need to sign him. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Hey, Raider Ortiz, what's happening? Ricardo, what's happening? Oh, thank you. Yes, this is from our boy Ariel. I know a lot of y'all are out there fiending for um, Ariel's updates from the stadium. However, I don't know if you've been noticing on um i don't know if we forwarded the info into the raider reaction chat but um ariel has become a straight on head chef or a chef and he's been given the responsibility of running a restaurant you know having a brand new startup a brand new launching of a restaurant in vegas called pamplona and it's getting reviews. They had some uh, food critics from the Food Network in. And, hey, Brett, I'm I'm thankful for the appreciation. I like the last name. I like the location because he was in the Bay Area. But the other team, not you, the other team. But, um, you know, we all know we need Mac. And... We all hold out, pun intended, hope that all this will get taken care of. Um, something that I wanted. Yeah, they did get roughed up, but the thing was, um, 
in the second half. The first half, though, the table got set for how that game was going to go. And they came out and pretty much laid down. And the Croats just, they were quicker. England was flat-footed in that game. It's just plain and simple. They were playing flat-footed, and the Croatians were, like, on the ball of their feet. However, now my prediction for the final, <laughs> listen to me, I'm forecasting soccer. What's good, O'Kill? My soccer prediction is France runs them boys off the field. Because France is fit quicker, faster, and it seems as though they're more skilled. If they try to bully them, they that that's not going to work because they're too quick. They have where Croatia has a few quick guys. France's whole team is fast. Their backups are fast. And they got skill. That little 19-year-old cat is going to myrtleize them. Myrtleize. Let me see. Who said that? Um. Oh. Who was what's his name? Heavens to Murgatroyd. Oh, I don't remember, but it was a cartoon cat. Somebody get at me with it. But um, back to Khalil. We all know we need him. And so we all know what's going to happen, you know. So we need to, let me change the focus a little bit to something that we haven't talked about, but something that I read an article on, and I want to give credit to where I've seen it, but I don't remember. I think it was uh, just Blog Baby. Um, real talk. We need Navarro Bowman back. He's still out there. And I think the whole plan might have been all along to wait until Khalil was in camp to know exactly how much money we had to play with before we actually put a real offer on the table. And what we were doing during free agency was trying to see if we could get a hometown bargain for him. Because in reality, let's be real. If Khalil wanted, I mean, not Khalil, I'm sorry. If Navarro wanted to go somewhere else, I'm pretty sure he had some pretty, pretty, pretty high quality cheese on the table waiting for him. I think he wants to stay in the Bay. That's where he's played his whole career. And if people are talking about, well, he's just going to retire, if that was the case. He wouldn't have came and played with Oakland last year. So I think he came over there. He likes the environment. He wants to be there. We need him. Because as the article or as what I was watching or read saying, hey, Terry, what's happening? Was this. Derek Johnson, absolutely just dead on, solid, perfect coverage linebacker. Man. But when it comes to stuffing the run or reading the run, that man got sucked, sucked up like Peruvian flake at a damn Michael Irvin house party. That's just the way it went. And so, hey, George, what's going on? It was Snagglepuss. That's right. It was Eddie Garcia. Um, <laughs> see, I got that. Um... And see, and this is the thing. So, I mean, he had below average grades in reading, in covering the run and reading the run. Navarro, that's his shit. Navarro is an absolute monster in run, in, in stopping the run and stuffing the run. And the other thing is, Navarro can cover the pass. I mean, do I need to remind y'all that it was Navarro Bowman that got our first interception last year in our shitty defense? Oh, you like that Peruvian flake comment, huh? But anyway, um, and then, you know, on that flip side, you know, uh, Bruce Irvin was not a bad, he was an okay linebacker at best. I mean, he was a little, he was better than okay. But he's going to be a monster, you know, potential monster at DN. And Arden Key is another hybrid linebacker that we're going to use in pass rush. So 
you know, there you go. We have two hybrid beasts that are going to rotate in on the pass rush on the flip side. So we don't... Um, Who was it? Moro? Was it Moro? Or... I can't remember. Somebody help me with the other linebacker that they project as the starter out there on the other side. Because, see, and this is the thing. A-lines was happening. Johnson would be a perfect strong side backer. And he could be the nickel linebacker for passing downs. Wonderful. Navarro is your stud. Navarro's going to be in there run and pass. Johnson could be in there pass. And then, oh, I remember who it is. It's the dude we got um, from uh, Detroit. Somebody help me with the name. Hey, Leslie. He is deadly on your pass rushing. He's a monster. He's a he's a savage on the run stuffing. He's okay. No, not okay. I take that back. You drop his ass back in pass coverage. He's about, yeah, to hear Whitehead. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Terry. To hear Whitehead is about as useful in pass coverage as a paper towel in a mash fest. If you're trying to stop pregnancy, you know, you know, he, he, to hear Whitehead is about as good as a bounty in a fuck fest. No good. You don't want him on the field if the quarterback's passing, passing the ball. So once again, in pass coverage, Navarro Bowman would be our best linebacker. Derek Johnson would be a very viable option in pass coverage, run coverage, stuff in the run, to hear Whitehead, a monster, pass coverage, what the fuck? See, to hear Whitehead is good at one, horrible at the other. Derek Johnson, outstanding at the other one, and uh, at the other. Navarro excels at both. We need him. Because, see, by having Navarro, and also Navarro is your defensive quarterback. So, by having Navarro being in there to run the coverages, read the offense to adjust your defense... If you run in either way, Navarro can read and have Derrick Johnson's back just in case he does get trapped. Navarro can read, can run side to side. Tahir is going to cover his side of the field. JD, my man, what's happening? I got a question for you. I'll just make sure that you're in here good before I ask it. Um, so Bowman is basically going to need Three quarters of the field. Tahir's going to have his side locked down. In pass coverage, you know, if we're going to go zone, Tahir's going to come off the field anyway. And the underneath is going to be covered by a safety and the two backers. So, by signing Bowman back, it pretty much... Not pretty much. It drastically improves what we already project to be a much improved defense. It makes it that much better. Because let, let's just already let, let's just you know put it out there. Mohurst in the middle with anybody on the on the other side of him ups the ante on the attention that the middle's going to get. Because we're project and you know everybody projects. Okay, I didn't flip the damn camera. See, you saw the sex pit over there. Or, excuse me, you saw the palatial setup. I'm, you, you see, I'm going to take you in the bathroom if it does that shit again. Um, I'm trying to keep my fingers clear of the microphone. But, yeah. 
He didn't see the bottle of grease and the wiggle stick over there, I hope. That's not for me, you know. But I'd show you the real wiggle stick, but I don't want to offend nobody. Um, hey, JD, can you swing by and scoop me on Sunday for the, um, for the meeting? Just curious. Um, but, um, anyway, meanwhile, back at the ranch, um, oh, you damn right, big sexy. If you like your loving by the pound, I'm your man. Just hooking up with me alone will make you gain 30 pounds so you can handle the push. Um... <laughs> Thought you knew. You better recognize. Um, now the secondary. The secondary is a completely different thing. Because now with Melvin on one side. And with us predicting that Conley is going to come back 100%. Um, hey Manuel. Um, the best safety lineup at this point. You know, until we know everybody say it, everybody, I mean, Joseph is obviously going to be one. Um, but until we know who's healthy and who's up to speed and we know the actual system that they're going to be playing in. All right, bro. Good looking out, JD. I got around. Um, I like the Gilchrist, but see, once again, we got to make sure. We have to make sure because you know, you all we all know what a suman does. Um, yes, um, Leslie, I can be straight and to the point, or I can wiggle and give you a tickle. It's up to you. Whatever you like, I'm your man. I'm kind of like you know, special orders don't upset your boy. So that's all I'm. You know. Anyway, see, I'm very easily distracted. I'm about to partner. See, I'll get mine once you get up. Uh, damn it. See, I put myself in time out, but y'all listening to me. So I'm sorry because, you know, there is no, there's no greater man. Oh, the man parts over there than a Raiders man. If you need me. Oh, by the way, JD, I'm with you. Aha! Um, what do I think about Obi? I think at some point they're all going to be on the field at the same time. I think they're all going to be on the field at the same time at some point. Because we're going to find out, to be quite honest with you, we're going to find out, real talk, who is going to be that number three corner? Because our number three corner does not have to be a corner. Because everybody's concerned about Melifuanu picking up, you know, the safety spot and all of this, that, and the other. And remember, we converted him to corner anyway, or safety anyway. They did not. They're right fucking here, woman. <laughs> um, <laughs> see, that's that mountain shine you drinking. Um, but the reality of it is, hey JD, share the show into ORN, please. Um, but the reality of it is, is that is um, Melifuanu might be a good. Slot cover corner. And even though he may play safety in dime or something, you know, to come in when there's a four wide receiver set, maybe he's a better nickel corner than the corners that we have. Now, nah, Ariel got it. Ariel got it for me. There's also black ones, Leslie. Just ask Ariel where he got it from. Um, there's no, there's no guarantee because actually, you know, in a true solid defense, it doesn't matter who does what, as long as shit gets done. That's the way I look at it. 
There's absolutely no anything. Everybody puts chips together. So if it's, you know, if we're three, four deep at corner, fine. We're three, four deep at corner. If we're three, four deep at safety, good. We're three, four deep at safety. But in that competition, it's going to be revealed who's better covering in the slot, who's better covering in zone, who's better covering man to man, and whoever is good at doing whatever, do it. Hey, Juan, I'm sure there's going to be a whole line of them once the NFL approves the Raiders' new swag. And that'll probably be at the end of this coming year or midseason because you know once all the bootleg gear starts getting sold up, the NFL is going to get their patents and licenses out. And this right here, there's all these rumors coming out about shit changing up. I highly doubt it. This is always going to be us. It's been us since 60. You know, a couple of tweaks to the shield. But this dude right here has always been us and it's always going to be us. Um, But my feeling about the safety situation, I mean, there's a few things that could really fuck up our season. One, car getting hurt. I don't necessarily feel like that would completely destroy the season. Because if you remember last year when Manuel came in, it wasn't Manuel that fucked up that game. It was all those fucking dropped passes. And Cook had the biggest one. So I think we're set at second string. We're set. We're set at backup quarterback. Um, oh, 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 no, no, you can't go over there. Cause see, the treasure chest is over there. Good. Um, and I know what you're thinking. No, nothing's going in this steel trap back here. Um, <laughs> and then. Second, if Miller is not 100% ready, Donald Penn. We can't afford to have DC's ass exposed. Cannot have that. Cannot have that. Hey, Bob, what's going on? I'm telling you, dude, you got the butt. Look, I got the keys to the bus and see, we rolling. We rolling, see? And we showing diversity. We we rolling on a Wednesday. Um, you you mess with me, we'll roll tomorrow too. We'll jump on the cat. We'll ride up there and hang out with the captain. Um, yeah, I mean we had. Hey David, I don't think I I hollered at you. Um, see Juan, my 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 concern is more pinned than the front side because. Miller, I think, you know, for for all intents and purposes, he's picking up he's picking up what they're giving him. Now he just needs battle tested. Hey, KD, what's happening? Kevin Davis, what's going on? He needs he just needs seasoning, and that seasoning could come preseason and on into more contact and practice. And if he needs to do more. I think that it would be easier to put him in on the front side than it would be to put him in against the elites of every team. Because even if it's the Browns, you're going to get the cash money, best player coming off the edge on DC's back. I don't think he's ready to take over for Penn yet. If he has to, he has to. But I don't give a shit what everybody says about Donald Penn. All the shade everybody's throwing. He's old. He can't move anymore. He's no good. Bullshit. You don't know football if that's what you're saying about Donald Penn. Donald Penn is still one of the top five offensive left tackles in the NFL when he's healthy. 
he's supposedly healthy now. And if that's the case, that side of the line with Osamile, Penn, and then Hudson in the middle, we got the left side of the line anchored. What you may look for is that other side, if them other two knuckleheads start fucking up again, our future left tackle being put in at right tackle and our future right tackle coming in at guard. Because if those rookies show up and show out like they have the ability to do, why let them sit on the sideline and wait, put them in and let them take over and, and, and do grown folks work while these two has-been fuck-ups are in there bullshitting? And see, that's my thing. And see, and this is the other thing that, con the only thing that concerns me, Mark Anthony, what's going on? The other thing that concerns me is this. With those road graders we have in front and the potential, because see, we don't really know for sure what Gruden's offense is going to be. We know there's going to be a lot more running. We know there's going to be, you know, a focus on getting back to old school. But see... Remember, you know, Gruden had some passing and some shit going on in that offense. He had to. And we have Cooper. And speaking of people that we can't afford to get hurt, it's not Mar Amari. Because, see, now that we have, you know, Jordy, now that we have, um, Slipping my mind. Martavis. If Cooper was to tweak, was to get tweaked, if Amari got tweaked, we have two receivers that can slide into that position. If we have a receiver that can't get hurt, it's Jared Cook. Because Gruden's gonna make that he's gonna make the tight end really, really vital in this offense. So we need somebody out there that's gonna draw attention. And be a concern for the defenses of the other teams. But this is my bigger concern. I love Beast. Marshawn Lynch is one of my favorite players in the NFL. But this is the thing. Much as I love him, I really don't know if the Beast, even though his tank is still, you know, relatively full, if we're going downhill on people all season, damn it. No, it came back. Even if we get the running game that we're suspecting that we're going to have, I'm not positive that he's going to be able to toe the line, carry the load. Because with the type of offense that Gruden runs, ran, if he can bring that back, Dude, with the offensive line we have, Gruden ain't never had an offensive line like this. We got a 2,000-yard running game. If everything gets handled the way that it can be, we don't have a 2,000-yard back back there. That's our only problem. But with a two-headed monster back there, we could. And that's where our boy Dougie Fresh comes in. Muscle hamster, whatever the fuck y'all want to call him. Look, I'm a hip-hop head in the 80s, baby, when it comes to my music. So, I'll call him Dougie Fresh. Y'all call him Muscle Hamster. That shit sounds nasty. That sounds like something somebody aggressively shows up their ass. I got more respect for the dude than Muscle Hamster. Um, and that's my thing. He's looking good, but you know what? I look good in Speedos. I look good in Spandex. Put some pads on that motherfucker. Let's see what he looks like when he starts getting hit and having to find holes. Shit. You know? There's a whole lot of motherfuckers look good till they got punched in the mouth. Did y'all see... I mean, for those of y'all that are 
friends with me on Facebook, y'all saw that could he be the worst boxer ever shit? That motherfucker looked good, was tan, all buff and shit, six pack. His mullet was all tight and greased up. He got knocked out in 12 seconds. He was so bad that the announcers was clowning him. You can look real good when you got spandex on. My ass looks like a perfect apple. Let me take the motherfucking spandex off, you know. I'm one of them kind of cats, you know, ladies, once you get me in the room, you got me. It's too late to be, like, shocked and amazed. You stuck. <laughs> but anyway. I mean, I still stand by the fact that um, either Washington or Richard, one of those two, card getting pulled this year. Because, yeah, Warren... Warren, I think, is going to make the team. And if Washington and Rashard both make the team, Warren's going on the practice squad. That's what I think. Um, but see, on my last comment, don't let the rich taste fool you because, see, you'll fall in love with this. I mean, you'll fall in love with me if you give me an opportunity. You know, I may not be your type now. But I'm the flavor that you'll save a neighbor. Mm. Uh, but you know, it's, it's just one of those things offensively, our foundation is where it should be. And that's in our offensive line. We have the quarterback that we need. We have a core group of receivers. We have three proven receivers. Not all teams can say that. Not even the supposedly best teams. Philadelphia can't say they have three receivers. They can barely say they have fucking one. New England can't say they have one receiver, and their best receiver got, I mean, a midget gets popped for performance-enhancing drugs? What? But then cheating is what they do. And they play in the worst division in fucking football, and they're cheating? And that's the other thing. It's like, oh, they're a dynasty. No, motherfucker, y'all play six free games every year, so y'all fresher than everybody else when you get to the playoffs. Hey, Lance, what's going on? Sometimes I feel bad for talking all the shit that I talk because Lance is such a nice kid. Um, yeah, well, no, there are exceptions if he's not ready because you can destroy his confidence. Um, but then Robert Gallery was the third pick, and you know, you see what he turned into. He turned into a quarterback killer. There's like eight quarterbacks that could file lawsuits against him for untimely death or murder of their fucking fifth vertebrae. You know, I mean, Robert Gallery was an oxygen thief the last seven years of his career. He was out there just collecting a paycheck, and he was a swinging gate. That fucker had double swinging latches on his ass. I mean... He took a mean picture, though. I mean, he, one of the best Raider pictures of an offensive lineman ever is of Robert Gallery. Fucking oxygen thief. He needs to refund humanity for the oxygen he fucking stole for the seven years he was in the league. Or 12. That's how bad it was the fucker was around. I mean, he was like a working man's version of Tony Mandarich. Thank you, KD. Yes, he was trash. Hmm. He was the opposite of me. Treasure. Um, but yeah, our offensive foundations are offensive line. Cause I don't care what kind of receivers you have. I don't care what kind of quarterback or running back you have. If your offensive line can't block, you ain't gonna get shit done. Tom Brady has been surrounded by trash his whole career, but his offensive line wasn't all. His offensive line was good. That's what has me laughing about, you know, all these grandiose predictions for all these marginal teams. Look at their offensive lines. If you have a suspect quarterback with a shitty old line, you're going to get, pardon the term, hate fucked. I mean, it's like everybody's talking about Kirk Cousins in Minnesota. That offensive line is suspect. You see what he did with a, off a suspect offensive line in Washington? I mean, yeah. Oh, my voice is getting higher because I'm getting emotional. Um, 
Yes. Brady is, I'd even go as far as to say Brady's a vaginal secretion. Yeah. Yeah, he ain't even a pussy because he ain't that he ain't that tough. Because he pussies can take a beating and that motherfucker can't. You know. That, mm mm-mm. That motherfucker cries like my old stepson his first day in juvie. (laughs) That's how much of a bitch he is. Not trying to put nothing out there, but I'm just saying. (laughs) Um, But, you know, I think we're going to be all right. Um, Our kicking game, I think, is going to be... If this motherfucker changes one more again... I have no idea why it's doing that. Pardon me for the technical difficulties. I'm dealing with a new phone. And it's going to be the last time I deal with this motherfucker. I don't don't know what's going on. But you know what? I'm enjoying the fact that y'all enjoy me. So, I love y'all. I hate my phone sometimes, but I love y'all. Um, like I said, I think the kicking game is going to be better. Um... Well, I know the kicking game is going to be better because Guido, Guido wide left. It's not a throw sheet. Al, be nice. Hey, Barry, I don't think I saw you yet, but I don't know. Yeah, Gimme did die. (laughs) Gimme died and gotta got a pardon. Um, but the thing for me is this real talk, you know, we've improved everywhere where we need to improve and our shortcomings are getting less and less. So with the improvements that we've made and yes, Tom Brady's wife carries a ton of balls, but that's also because she's gobbled up more than a fucking squirrel waiting on winter. Um, but for me, the reality of it is, is we're a much improved team. Thank you, Josh. We we all love our Raiders, and you know we're we're going to. Do I look at it like this? Las Vegas is the it, Las Vegas is the city of of, of shock. The, the 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 city of just comebacks. The city of blowing your fucking mind this year. Anybody see the UFC? What happened at the T-Mobile Center this week? This weekend? Daniel Cormier lullabied Stipe Miocic. Did anybody expect that shit to happen? Nope. Las Vegas Knights. Anybody expect that shit to happen? Nope. Does anybody see our motherfucking Raiders coming? Mm Mm-mm. Exactly. And that's the other thing, Bob. Perfect, perfect example. If we didn't pick Colton Miller when we did, his ass would have ended up in New England. So, as much criticism as we get for doing it, would have been the exact same amount of praise as the Patriots would have gotten for drafting him. Horseshit. Whenever we do anything, we get criticized. And whenever anybody does any else, they'll get praise for the exact same thing. We've been the league villain since 19 motherfucking 60. We've been the league villain since before we were even in this fucking league. We will always be the home team of the state of California. We will always be 
the most hated team in the state of America. So, we will always be the most loved team in the state of California. We will always be the most loved team in the United States, in Europe, Africa, Asia, Mexico. Fuck the Cowboys. We run Mexico too. We run this rock. The whole rock. You can call Dallas America's team. Fuck Dallas. Fuck Frisco. Fuck New England. It's Raider Nation. This is the Raiders rock. We run this planet. Fuck everybody else. Hey, Sonny. Prayer still going up for your little niece, baby. It don't matter. We got this. And just like everything else that's been happening in Vegas this year, we're going to shock the fucking world. We're going to leave Oakland with a fucking championship and we're going to bring that motherfucking car. We're, we're bringing that mojo. We're bringing all of that right there to our first and only fucking stadium right there a block off the Las Vegas motherfucking strip right there with our own exit off of I motherfucking 10. If you ain't been there, you need to get there. Because um, we got our own stadium and we have our own restaurant with our own chef. Ariel at Pamplona. Raider Nation, bitches. And of course, we have... Who, who, what? 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 you damn right. And you got your sexiest internet host right here. Your boy. Your man. Your dream. Your nightmare. Whatever you need me to be. Except if you're one of them women that's into getting your ass kicked. I can't do it for you. Mm -mm. I can't slap you around. Mm -mm. Now I can spank that ass. But that's about it. You like getting choked out and all that other bullshit? There's another network for that. Not your, bo not your dude. Mm -mm. I'm into some freaky shit, but I ain't into no beating shit. Um, I guess that was another PSA, wasn't it? Nobody asked for it, but I just felt like I needed to do that. That was a disclaimer. Um, we're going to get it. We're going to get it. It might take us a year. But I like, I would really love to hit, hit this shit while the iron is on fire. We're going to shock the shit out of a lot of people because don't nobody, nobody expects it and nobody sees it coming. You know? I haven't even mentioned the fact. I mean, I may, I may have mentioned Gruden once or twice. I think with the way everything has gone down this off season, fuck, we could have done this. We, we we could do this shit with Del Rio as coach as long as we replace the coordinators. But I'm glad we didn't. Uh, that would be uh, Kevin. That that would be your sexual chocolate sugar dick daddy, Mister Long. All one word. Patent pending. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> oh, slap and tickle. Yep. I think Bell Bev DeVoe said it best. Slap it up, flip it, rub it down. Oh, no. Um, but um, I think the name of that song was Do Me Baby. Do me, I'll do you. Hmm. <sighs> but uh, we're going to be good. We're, we're going to be fine. We're going to be lovely. We're Raiders. We are not meant to come through the front door. No. We ain't even meant to. Well, I mean, there are some people that like to come through the back door. There are some people that like the back door being barged in. 
Um, ladies, if that's you, hit up my inbox. I'm not mad at you. Um, we going to kick some shit in. We're going to fuck up a lot of people. And, you know, I think we should get out the pen and paper now so we can take down all the names of these motherfuckers breaking their legs trying to jump on the bandwagon about... Don't even give them half the season. Give them about week five. And let's just start... Uh-huh. No. Denying their friend requests. Fuck y'all. Y'all was the ones talking shit. So-called experts. But, you know what? It's our time. You're damn right. It's our time. These fucking bandwagon bandits... I'm going to put my nephew on blast real quick. I've been a Patriot fan since 1995. Oh! You mean since they figured that 8-8 eight eight wasn't something I... You know. Like I told him. I'm like, since 95? Oh, because for the previous 40 years, they was the NFL's cum rag. Everybody blew a load in them and then wiped their ass off with them. They was the two wins on the on, on the sheet that everybody knew they could come to. And now they start winning and they, and they start picking up fucking fans. Kiss my black ass with that shit. Oh, we've won all these Super Bowls. No, motherfucker, you cheated through all these Super Bowls. I don't know, man, Kevin. I'm thinking 11 and 5 or higher. 11 and 5 would be like borderline. I think 11 and 5 would be an average year this year, but it'll still get us in the playoffs where I think we would do the damage. It's really just going to depend on how healthy we stay this year. Um how well we do. If we can get through the year unscathed, dare I say knock on I think this is wood, but you know how shit goes nowadays. Um, if we can get through the year like we did uh, two years ago and better, meaning Donald Penn admits that he's hurt so we can get, you know, somebody in there for him so Carr doesn't get his leg broke when he's in a game that he doesn't need to be in anymore because we're up by three touchdowns and get to the playoffs with a quarterback. Um, we will cause a whole lot of hell if we get into that postseason. And I think there's a lot of motherfuckers that's already nervous, which is why they're downplaying all of the adjustments and everything. They're waiting to see before they jump on the bandwagon and be wrong since they were so wrong about what we did last year. But... Uh-uh, Leslie, I know what you did in 1966. You was falling in love with me. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You, you developed a taste for chocolate. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Because he's had a year to get over his fear of having people around his leg. He's gotten over... He, he's gotten to deal with that back injury for almost an entire year. Um, we have we have so much to look forward to. This shit's about to be insane. But with everything being said, y'all, it's about that time. I got on a little bit late, but um, I'm giving y'all all I got. Uh, it's Wednesday. Um, I got a couple of things I need to get into, like do not get into, um, you know, I don't have it like that right now. So anyway, by choice, um, y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's night. Fear the shield. I love y'all. Remember always. Peace. Love. It's all about this here. That nation. I don't give a fuck what city. I don't give a fuck what state. What country.
is about the shield. Raider Nation, bitches. Peace and love.